you get out what you put in. Read in Galatians chapter 6, verses 7, 6, verses 7 and 8. Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Ready, read. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, and that's a capital Spirit, that's Holy Spirit, that's God, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You get out what you put in. So if you're only spending time feeding the flesh, the only reward you're going to get is of the flesh which you sowed. So as a child of God, you're committed to spend time, or you should commit to spending time in the Word of God so that you get revelation, you get understanding, you get wisdom, you get revelation on how to live this life, on how to serve God, on how to live in this earth with people, amongst people. How to serve God. So if we spend time in the word of God, we will reap wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation. We will learn how to live the life that God intended for us to live. We will learn about God and his mercies, his love. We will really, really experience peace and joy and love like never yet before. If we do it God's way and we put time in studying his word, then it truly shows us who our adversary is. It teaches us about our adversary. And who is our adversary? The devil, Satan, yes. Satan is the one that is coming up against us. Whenever you're under attack or you're going through something, usually, usually, if you're not just being tempted by, for God to grow you, to strengthen you, you're not going through for something, but you're always being tested in one way or another. You might get a little break now and again, but most of our lives we go through tests. Most of our lives we go through tests. Some of us bring tests upon ourselves and then some God allowed to come. Our words a lot of time cause us unnecessary pain, unnecessary delay, unnecessary hardship, our words. So if we spend a lot of time speaking negative thoughts, living a life of fear, and every time something good happens, we look at it and only see the negative in it. We are setting up ourselves to reap some serious seeds from that, some serious harvest from that, because they're called bad seeds. The word of God says, whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. But the word of God also calls word seed. The words that we speak, seed. The words that we speak are life, they are living. You get out what you put in by time. What are you investing your time in? You have great athletes out there. They call professional athletes. They make a good living, some of them, because they put the time in to perfect that skill. 
to grow their talent. Make millions, millions every year. But they put the time in. They put the time in. You get out what you put in. You have professors, you have doctors, and they become professors and doctors because they put the time in. They are investing time into a part of their life that they want to really get the most out of. So to become doctors, they become professors. They put time in. You get out what you put in. If you sow bad seeds, you're going to reap a bad harvest. If you spend your day sitting down murmuring and complaining, you're going to die in the wilderness. Do not waste precious time. Do not sit back and expect things to move if you're not prepared to spend the time. Don't sit back and think life is going to get great because you say it's going to get great. At times you have to get up and put action to your words. The word of God says, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer also. The word of God is the word that you have to hear and you have to do. In order for you to get the most out of life, we have to know the word, understand the word, but we have to work the word. You get out what you put in. In order for us to come here today, we had to spend the time to get up, get ready, drive here, or walk here, or however we got here. We got here because we made up our minds we was coming. And I hope it wasn't because you were dragged here. I hope you came willingly. Because if you were dragged here, you're not going to get nothing out of this today. You have to come prepared. You have to come willing. You have to come wanting. In other words, you have to come desperate. Athletes, professional athletes, we see them and they make that sport look real easy. But if we go and try it, no. It becomes easy to them because they practice. They put time in perfecting that sport. Perfecting it. We want to have the millions and we wanted to drop out this guy. Don't work like that. We want God to hear our prayers. The minute we pray, but we don't want to spend time in the word. We don't want to get spend time knowing him. We don't want to spend our life serving him. We don't want to give what we should give to him that rightfully belongs to him. You have people sow a lot of bad seeds in bad relationships. You're going to get out what you put in. If you know a woman ain't good, don't run after her. You know that man ain't good, don't run after him. Leave bad people to themselves. Amen. Do not get yourself entangled in something that is not going anywhere for you. God does want us. We, turn, we choose not to hear him. You get out what you put in. Take that love and put it on Jesus. Amen. Take that love that you're putting on bad people, bad relationship, wasting time and energy and give it to Jesus. If you find yourself having to suck your teeth or when they person run across your mind and you wrench up your face, something wrong. <laughs> You get out what you put in. Those, oh, she gonna change, she gonna change. A bad woman, it's a bad woman. There's a song say a bad woman costs good man sleep in the policeman. Han. Right? A bad woman costs good man to sleep in policeman. Han, I want you all to hear that song. So good bellas, don't go running after that bad woman. She's a bad woman, only God can change her. Same thing with women. Y'all want to take and work that hard and go buy him shoes and buy him pants and buy him shoes. Pick up your breakfast and pick up your lunch and go cook dinner. A bad man is a bad man. 
And he was bad when you first lay her eyes on him. He just was a little bit slick. <laughs> he just try to hide you. When he know he got the main squeeze and you just a side chick. You get out what you put in. If you invest time in the right relationship, you will reap a great reward. Amen. Do not be afraid to invest time in God. Invest time in people, the right people in your life. Let us move away from what we want. And let us move to what God say we need. He said he'll give us our heart's desire, but what is it that you desire? In order for you to know what to desire, you have to know what God has for you. Don't desire bad things. Don't desire what the neighbor has. Don't, do, don't desire God to get so desperate for something that you're willing to compromise. If you wait on God to bring him, if you wait on God to show you her, he will show you the one that he has made for you and only for you. He will bring the one that he made for you and only for you. Every person have a soulmate. They, you know, they call them soulmate, but they're soulmate. That's your wife or your husband. So do not call people your soulmate. You don't want to be tied to a demon. You don't want to be tied to a whoremonger. You don't want to be tied to a selfish person. You don't want to be tied to a crybaby. You don't want that. You don't need that. So when you looking for a relationship, go to God first. Because whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. So let us focus on us first. Let us decide which road we're going to take. What road are we going to take? Let us make the decision who are we going to run after? Before we run after what we like, because of our eyes say it looks good, and we're not bringing that to God, then we stand a chance of sowing some bad seeds. Let us do what the word of God says. Let's seek first the kingdom of God. Satan is real busy and he's real crafty. And if he see you out there looking, he say, oh, he know that you're ready to go get married. He's going to bring you all kind of people that you don't need to get caught up with. So let us focus on ourselves first. Let us focus on our relationship with God first before we venture out into something that will cause us pain and hurt. A lot of our focus is on home, work, school. Home, work, school. Our focus. If our focus is only on school and we forget Christ, if our focus is only on work and we forget Christ, if our focus is only on home and we forget Christ, then we are sowing bad seeds. Christ has to be first. God has to be in everything that we do. Work, home, have to be God-centered. Have to. Same thing with work. Work, have to be God-centered. You need God on that job. Because the devil is looking for any open door to try to get to you. He don't care who you are, you know. As long as you belong to God, he's out to get you. As long as you say you are a child or a Christian, he's out to get you. Because the unsafe, he already have. He don't have to waste time on them. He already pulling their strengths. They're already doing everything that he, he drop in their spirit to do. Or I should say in their minds to do. Their hearts to do. Satan already owned the unsafe. He already have them going his way. The children of God, he do not have. And so what he do? Walk around like a, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's the righteous. That's the seed of God, the children of God. It's who he is after. And so if we do not put God in our homes, put God in our jo on our jobs, put God 
in school or as we go to school, we are missing big time. We are sowing bad seeds. Prioritize God. Prioritize Christ in your life. Put him first in your home. Put him first on the job. And put him first in your schoolwork. God has to be first. And first place. God don't take second place to anything or anyone. If he's not first, then whatever you put first is the God that you serve. And so when we pray to God, and we put him first, and we put him first in everything, then we get the help that we need, for he's our helper. When we put him in our homes, and we bring everything concerning home, that means children, that means the finances or the bills, food, everything that we give to God in our homes, and we give that to him knowing that he'll fix it, we'll have a great home life. A great, great home life. But we must first give it to God. He should be first. If you're looking for that great home life, then you give it to God. Father God, I thank you for blessing my home. Bless my home and bless everyone in my home. Do you speak that over your home? It's important. Father God, bless my home. Bless my home. Bless everyone in my home. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you have provided my daily needs, my daily my daily bread. The daily bread are all the bills. The daily bread are your food. Food for your family. And if we practice this, Father God, thank you for giving me this day my daily bread. That's all sufficiency. That's in every area of your life. So if we practice speaking the word, we will see manifestation of the word. They are good seeds. But when we do not speak the word, what else are you speaking? Because if you're not speaking the word, you're speaking that. Because the word of God is life. And it is good life. It leads to blessing. When we pick up our cross and follow Christ, and we really, really follow Christ, and we do what God tells us to do, then we can expect God to save us when troubles come. We can expect him to deliver us out of the lion's den. We can expect good things to happen for us. When we give him our hearts and when we live a life that is pleasing to God. Men were so wicked in the earth, so corrupt, the word of God call it, that God was sorry, he repented that he made man. And this was in the days of Noah. He he said that all was wicked. The only one that he looked on was Noah. Noah. Righteous man. You could imagine a world full of people. And the only righteous God saw was Noah. One man. Everybody else was corrupt. Wicked. They wake up thinking wickedness. They go to bed thinking wickedness. All day long they do wickedness. It repented God for making man. And he said he's going to destroy the earth. Man and every living thing on it. Everything. That's how wicked and corrupt man was. One man he said was righteous. That was Noah. Let's turn to Genesis 7. Genesis 7. We're going to read verses 4 so you get a little understanding to chapter verse 8. So let's go to Genesis 7, reading verses 4 through 8. Ready, read. There were giants. Where am I? Seven. Oh, so, okay, sorry. That's six. Genesis 6, sorry. 
6, reading verses 4 through 8. Ready, read? There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they were children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. All of man, all of man, that means the men, the women, and the children. The children grew up to be like the parents. Only Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah had three sons. God told Noah to build an ark. And the only ones who were saved were Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Eight persons because of Noah. Noah. Let's read seven chap chapter seven now, verse one only. Seven, verse one, ready read. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thine house into the ark, for they have seen righteousness. For you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. One man righteous before God. One man. And he saved him, his sons, and their wives. Wickedness. So it's important to spend time getting your house to go up together. All of you who have not married yet and looking for your your spouse, let me tell you something. Start praying now. You ain't too young to start praying for the right spouse God has given to you. The right one. Because you want to raise righteous children. You want to raise the next generation that will invest time in God. That will know God from baby. So that's the only life they know. A righteous life. Raise them up knowing God. Fearing God, loving God, and we raise a different generation. But it have to start with us. It have to start with us. Putting in good seeds in the ground so that we get a good tree, a good tree with good fruits. Bottom line. You have to spend the time. You have to do the work. So don't just run after the money. Don't just run after the education. Run after God, and God will bring the money and the education. Amen. Amen. Let us get it right. Let us get it right, because if we don't get it right, we're setting ourselves up a bunch of heartbreak. Love you enough to want the best God out for you. You get out what you put in. If you're not putting anything in, you're not going to get anything out. If you're not investing time in fixing you, you want a spouse. And you want a good spouse. You want a loving, kind spouse, but are you good? Are you loving? Are you kind? Some of us hard to live with. Some of us miserable as hell. But yet we want someone sweet and loving and kind and who's going to treat us right. You know how to treat someone right? What you putting in? 
What you putting in? What you putting in? Ask God to develop you, to make you that spouse, that husband, that wife, that when your spouse see you, every day they look at you and say, oh God, I thank you for this man you gave me. Oh God, I thank you for this woman you gave me. God, you've given me truly what I needed. You've given me for the man I help meet. You've given me the woman there to help me, who's going to pray for me, who's going to hold me up, who's going to be there to uplift me when I need that encouragement. Who, not just about washing clothes and, and, and cooking. That ain't what marriage is about. Amen. Value people. We have to learn how to value people. And it starts with valuing the people in your house. Some of us don't know the last time we sit down and have a conversation with our parents. And I'm talking about a good conversation. Daddy, how was your day? Daddy, how you doing? Some of us don't care about daddy because daddy probably wasn't there. Daddy probably didn't check. Daddy probably still ain't checking. So we wouldn't much as even pray and say, God, show him you. God, bless him. God, save him. God, save him. God, save him. Do we pray for them parents who the devil riding? We who know better should do better. We who are the children of God who are saved should know how to now start to pray for our loved ones who the devil is riding, who the devil beating down. Some of us, when the parents pull up, we go in the room, we pretend like we're sleeping. And you know, the sad thing is, we miss out on so much of, of that life that God have given to us in Christ Jesus. When we allow devil to bring separation, when we allow unforgiveness to continue in our hearts. Some of us don't know last time we speak to our siblings. Why? A lot of time we're too busy. Don't pick up the phone and call them. Don't even drive by their home to even check on them. Or just send them a little WhatsApp. Don't even got to call them. The phone is so convenient now. You even got to talk, you even got to talk. You could just type it out. Hey, what you saying? Just call and say, how you doing? Sometimes they pick up, the, they ring and they call and call in. You look at the phone and put it down. See, you get out of life what you put in it, you know. If you're not investing time in family, you think when you get older, family they're going to check for you. Home life is supposed to be sweet. Home life is supposed to be great. Home life is supposed to be full of joy and laughter. Our lives are supposed to be filled with joy and laughter and peace. When we run after God, we get that peace. We get that joy. We get that laughter. But we have to make God a priority. He has to be number one. He has to be first. Forget about the job, the house, the school. Give, it, give them to God. He said, cast your cares, Jesus said, on him. That means cast the home, cast the work, cast the school on Jesus. And then you seek first the kingdom of God. And he's going to show you how to get, how to do those homework and how to finish them quickly. He's going to tell you how to finish that work on, on, um, that you go to, to, on that job to do. He's going to show you how to do that quickly. He's going to show you how to get that around that. He's going to bring help for you when you need help in the areas that you need help in. But God has to be first. He has to be first. We're all about trying to make that money. Yes, yes, you need money. But money is a seed. Money is a seed. If we take all of the money and we spend all the money, we don't have anything left. But if we take some of that seed, that money, and we sow it in the right ground, we should see a harvest from that. Because if we give it to the poor, whom we are instructed to, the poor, the widows, the needy, the fatherless, and we give it to them, one, we lend to God. Remember that. You lend to God and he will repay that. He help you in times of trouble. He bless you because you consider them. And so when we do things like that, we are helping ourselves. We are working the word of God. When we turn our backs on people that are in need, be careful for the seed which you're sowing because you're sowing a seed. You say, they who give to the poor shall not see lack. Shall not see lack. 
So if you're looking not to see locked in, let's do this word. If you're looking for a better, a better life, let's do this word. Let's get in this word. Let's truly study this word so we can get a better and have a greater life. If you find yourself just home and work, home and work, that ain't no life. Homework, 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 that's not life. You're a slave to the, to the work and you're a slave to the school. You're a slave to the home if you don't have God in it. They become stressful, heavy, hard. Give it to God. He can show you how to keep your house clean. Give the work to God. He can show you how to finish in a timely manner. So you're not there all day, all night and carrying work home. You shouldn't have to carry work home. When you didn't put in your eight hours a day, our labor law say eight hours a day. Amen. 40 days a week. Amen. That's our labor law. You won't put in more than that, then you should go to God first. If you need to put in more than that, then you need to go to God and say, okay, God, am I putting in more time? And a lot of time we put in more time because we want more money. So if we need more money, who we should go see? God. God. Not leave it to yourself and say, okay, if I pick up 20 more hours here, I could pay this bill, I could pay that bill. God say, cast the bills while you want those bills. You don't want or don't total load what Christ is willing to tote for you. Jesus. We burden ourselves with the cares of life when we take God out of everything. Life is a good life when we do it according to the word of God. Noah and his whole family was saved because of his righteousness. His righteousness. Abram, Abraham became the father of many nations. And not only that, all of the nations in the world is blessed, is blessed because of Abraham. When Abraham started out, when God spoke to Abraham, his name wasn't even Abraham, his name was Abram. He was an old man already. And God spoke to him and told him, say, look here, leave your family, these dead people here. And I can take you over in the land and I'm going to make you. And he listened to God. God gave him the land of Canaan. He gave him children when he didn't have any children. Hence, wife was barren. His wife couldn't have children. And he was an old man and his wife was old when God tell him to come out from among his father, his people, his sibling, because he had siblings, he had a nephew. He told him to leave all of that behind and come and go into the land where I will show you. See, that's obedience to God. When he obeyed God and he followed God, God bless him. He blessed him with Isaac, the promised child. He blessed him with Isaac, the promised child. The promised child didn't come while he's sitting up in that dead land with family. It came when he obeyed the voice of God and he moved away from his family. And God blessed him with Isaac. And it's Isaac, because of Abraham's obedience, we get to be called his seed, his children, in Christ, that is. God saved him. God blessed him. He is called the father of many nations. He is our father. See, when we decide, when we make up our mind to put God first, God will take care of us. He will reward us. But God has to be first. He can't be in the back of our mind and our thoughts. He has to be there every day. When you give God your life and you really seek after him, you will never be disappointed. But we have to put in the time. We have to sow the right seed. If we sow the right seed in the right soil, we will get the right tree. If we sow the wrong seed in wrong soil, even if the soil is kind of good and it's the wrong seed, we still will get bad fruit from that tree. So what is it is that what is it you're expecting to get out of life this year? What is it that you want God to do for you? Have you spent the time to bring it to him? And have you waited for the answer? 
What is it that you really want? See, a lot of us, when we become parents, uh, we just want the best for our children. We forget about us like as though we come dead. So it's all about the children. Let me tell you something. God ain't finished with you, parents. God ain't finished with you. I know he ain't finished with me. Don't get old before your time. You got a lot of children working and working and they're working hard and they're getting old before they enjoy their lives. Parents, don't put that kind of pressure on your children. Let them enjoy their youth. Let them enjoy their life. We are there to guide them, to nurture them, to steer them, to raise them up in God. Not to put pressure on them, but pay this bill and you can't come if you and give me rent money. That ain't for them. Let them be children. Let them enjoy their youth. We get out what we put in. The younger you get God in your heart, the better it is for you. The earlier you start this journey in Christ, the better for you. Say, so get him in your youth. Don't wait till you get old and settle in life. It's harder that way because you've made it so far, you feel you don't need him. Get him in the youth. Some of you all haven't started your families yet. Before you start your family, make sure the spouse you're looking for is the one God has for you. Why? Let's go to Ephesians 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, reading verses 3 and 4. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. Ready, read. Great, oh, bless God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed his children, Christians, believers in Christ, with all spiritual blessings, that's your spouse. That's your children. That's the things that you need to enjoy life. So he has already given it to you. It's on us now to go to him. It's on us now to stay in him and get the one God out for us. Fellas, when you see that wife you're looking for and you're seeking, before you go seeking, because the word of God say, he who finds a wife. So all of y'all fellas, who wants to sit down and let a woman come to you, that's not the right way. He who finds a wife, so before you go looking for your wife, take the time and go to God. Find out from him the wife you need because he already handpicked her for you. The wife you need because he already handpicked her for you. The wife that is going to be your help meet that he have handpicked for you. Go to God before you start looking. Because a lot of time you're only looking for shape. <laughs> oh, she fine. Oh, she got a good body. It's past on body. When the first and second and third child come. <laughs> you don't now say, oh, but that ain't the body I marry. You ain't marrying the body. You marrying a help meet? Let's get this right. You ready to throw them down because they put on a couple of inches. <laughs> Carrying your seed. <laughs> Giving break to your seed. Get the one that God has for you. That he has given to you in Christ before the foundation of the world. Get the one who's going to help you. Who's going to be your help meet. Go and get the one God has for you. She's out there. 
but you go to God first. Father God, I'm looking for my wife now. Where am I going? Who am I looking for? These are some of the characteristics, the qualities that I want in her. Characteristics, qualities that I want in her. What kind of wife do you want? You want one who is caring, you want one that's loving, but first of all, you want one who really knows Jesus. You want one who really loves Jesus. You want one who's willing to walk with you if there's only bread and water to eat and drink. You want someone who's gonna hold you up and say, look here, it gonna get better tomorrow. God have us, we gonna be all right. You want that one who's going to uplift you, not someone, you ain't find a job yet? This, the, you, you got us like this? No, that ain't the one you want. You want the one who's gonna have your back. Take the time. Give her to God now. Ladies, we tend to one man who got money. Nothing wrong with one man with money. Oh, he broke. Some of us, we don't care. The thing is, but women, women don't care about the shape. They have, you have a big belly, you got have a big head. They don't care about that. Once he got a pocket full of money and a bank account that large. The majority of women, want, see, we want security. Women look for security, but they want a man who's going to treat them right as well. Don't settle for someone who only got money who don't know how to treat you good. And who's just going to put the money on the, or on the table, on the drawer, wherever you're going to put it, and walk out the door, and you don't see him. You want someone who's going to be there to help raise the children. You want someone who's going to be in the house and not just worried about putting the money on the table. In other words, paying the bill. You want a man who knows God first. Don't settle for nothing less. You want a good man. You want a man who's have a head on his shoulder. And so you go to God. You ain't looking. The man is the one who is looking for his wife. But you are praying. You are praying for the one that God has given to you. And only you. In Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. Don't settle for nothing less. If he come in and he can't open the car door for you, he sit now waiting for you wondering why you still stand up outside two minutes later. And it ain't clicking in head that he's supposed to done. Before you open that door, stand outside by that door, open that door for you, then who raise him? Who raise him? When I was on the dating field, don't look at the first thing I look at is a shoe. <laughs> Because if you wearing dirty shoes, everything on you dirty. Everything on you dirty. I look at the shoes. I, in the face. If the shoe is dirty, the whole of you dirty. Fast I can say. So when I was out there, I ain't get to teach yet because I gotta see the shoe first. Because if the, if you ain't taking time to clean your shoes as a man, you holy you dirty. Dusty shoes, a man got dusty shoes. <laughs> and I look at that and I was like, hold on now, Bill. Well, I don't see this the greater first and last day with you. And I ain't going out of politeness because look here, you done drive this far. At least I can do is sit down and conversate with you. The first thing I look at is the shoes. No joke. If the shoes ain't clean, they ain't gotta be the most expensive, you know but they have to be clean. All the years I know my dad, my dad's shoes was always clean. He used to brush them himself. All the years I know him. So do not settle ladies. If they ain't look right, don't say you gonna clean them up. Stop trying to clean up these fellas. Do not spend your time trying to clean up somebody. That's where we go wrong. We want that mo the mother nature in us take over and you want to mother him you ain't looking for you ain't looking to be a man's mother you looking for a husband that you will be a wife too not who you're going to mother so we have to get this right we have to get this right now any man who will look at you and say you could buy me lunch <laughs> you could bring me lunch you come in by me, come in where? Where you come in? Where you come in? See, we settle for the wrong things. 
get in the word and let me tell you something invest time knowing who you are invest time knowing what God has given to you in the promises in his words they all belong to you this is a blessing that came from God bless is bless bless so let us move on and get all the blessings from God stop trying to fix up fellas women stop trying to make them who they are not you can dress up a pig however you want to dress up that pig but you show him some mud show that pig some mud and the nature of that pig is going to go to the mud that's their nature let us stop investing good time and years in foolishness get the one God out for you your prayers to God is Father God give me the husband that you speak of in your word husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave his body for it that's the husband you want that's the one God has already given to you let him find you you don't go picking. Amen. We all about trying to fix them. Fix them. If their parents ain't raising them right, you can't fix them. Yeah. So let us just move on and say, okay, well, I, this ain't going no further than right here. And do not allow emo, your emotions to overcome you when it comes to people. Take it to God. God, he look good. He look nice. Is he the one? God can tell you off the bat if he is from is for you or not for you because he's gonna show you little signs. Don't ignore the signs. God, are you looking for my wife? Is this the one? He's gonna to say to you. Got the qualities you pray for? No, but the act that she look good, but she even though she ain't got all of these qualities, he's gonna say, Got the qualities you asked me for? No, but she got the he's gonna tell you. He's gonna and he's not gonna change his words. He's going to tell you if these qualities you ask for in a wife and you see in someone and they don't have the qualities, why are you still there? Can't change them. And don't make the mistake and go and marry them because they can get worse. So we have to pay attention. This is your life. And if you are not paying attention to it, Satan going to come and bring all kind of foolishness your way. Let's not settle in life for anything that less than what God has for us. Let's now go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Read in verses 1 through 3. 1, 2, and 3. Galatians chapter 3. 1 through 3. Ready, read. O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? That's Galatians 3? Yes. Verse 3, 1 through 3. Yes. If ye then be in risen with Christ? No. Galatians 3. Galatians, sorry. <laughs> C. Galatians. Galatians 3. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 3. Ready, read. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. If ye then be risen with Christ, in other words, if you are born again, believe in Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. And we are seated also the same place in Christ. It says, set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. Our affections are on the things in the earth. 
God is warning us not to do that. But set your affections on the things above. Only what you do for Christ will last. Make God a priority. Make coming in his sanctuary, learning of him, a priority. Set your affection on the things above. Get to know God, your Father. Jesus Christ, your Redeemer. Your Savior. Holy Spirit, your Helper. Your Comforter. Get to know them. Get to know what it is to be a real Christian. Do not be a selfish Christian. In other words, don't just be saved and waiting to die to go to heaven. It is so much more God has for us. In your home, your home should be a one that when you walk through the door, the atmosphere is that of, yes, peace and love and joy. When you walk into a house and it's, and, it, and it's chaotic and it's turmoil, you don't want to be there. No. You got some people stay awake. Oh, I got to wake late. There was this lady, she used to dress up and go to work every day, seven days a week. On her days off, for peace sake, her days off, she used to put her uniform on. And she used to go on the beach. <laughs> she spent a day on the beach. Why? Because of the home trying to get away from the children, looking for that peace. And so she pretended to go to work so that she could have that peace she needed. Your peace should be, uh, your house should be peaceful. Your house should be a, a home where you enjoy coming to. No stress, no drama, but love, joy, and peace. If that's not in your home, then you ask God to bless your home. Father God, bless my home. Bless it with love and joy, with peace. Bless everyone in my home. Father God, give us more joy, more love, more peace. Because we are entitled to them, you know, God is love. And if God lives in us, where he is, then we should have love, man. You should have love. How is your home? Is it a war zone? Someone always angry, someone always mad. Then pray for that person. Say, now God, I live here too. I looking for peace. I looking for joy. I looking for love. This is my home too. So every foul spirit, I command you to leave. See, you have authority over that house as long as you reside there. You can run the devil out of your home. Run him out. Run him out. Don't let him run you out because it's so... Um, um, harsh to live in there or it's kind of it, it's someplace you don't want to be so you find yourself spending no time home and you find yourself someplace else where you should not be because you're looking for peace don't do that don't let the devil run you out your home you got go to god the righteous judge and say father i so tired of hearing the noise i want peace in my home when i walk in here i want to feel you in here so every foul spirit I command to leave, Father God, let there be peace in my home. Let there be joy. Let there be love. Let there be greater laughter in my home. You could speak that. You could speak that. Don't settle for nothing that makes you uncomfortable. Nothing that makes you uncomfortable. Nothing that makes you uncomfortable to the place where, point where you're angry, you're miserable, you're depressed, you're lonely, you're hurting. Don't never settle for them, them kind of um, situations or those conditions. It only make, make it worse. You got people on medication for depression. You have people that live lonely, sad lives, and you got a house full of people, and they're lonely and they're sad. We're a house full of people. How is that possible? It's possible when you don't have Christ. And so we have to now fight, fight, and stay fighting for that peace, for that love, for that joy, because Satan is out there trying to steal it at every chance he get. So we have to fight for it and keep fighting for it. We have to do this. Us, we have to do this. Let's go to Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Reading verse 3. Three and four, Isaiah twenty-six, reading verses three and four. Ready, read. Thy 
Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for he, Jehovah, is everlasting strength. Amen. One more time. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So how long are we supposed to trust in God? Forever, forever right. And where you see thee in chapter 3, where it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Underline thee if you haven't already, and put God. Because he trusted in thee, God. And you see where it says him. Thou will keep, put your name right there. If you have a little spot. Thou will keep Alvonia in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on God because. And you say, see say he, put your name again. Because Alvonia trusted in God. Put your name there. And you declare it. You speak it. And so when it should read, it should read, Thou will keep, and you say your name, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on God because, and you put your name in there, because you trusted in God. Trust God. And it says, trust you in the Lord forever. You keep trusting in God. And it says, for he is your everlasting strength. Keep God first. Keep your trust in God. Don't put your trust in, in people. Don't put your trust in money. Put your trust in God and you will not be disappointed. Only trust God. Only trust God. Don't trust people. The arms of flesh, the word of God say, will fail you. They will, people will let this, this disappoint you. People will let you down. The people, the human beings. They will fail you and they will let you down. God will never fail you. It's impossible for him to fail you. It's impossible for him to let you down. You keep your faith and trust in God. And you keep trusting him. And he said he will keep you in perfect peace. Run and desire and hunger for that peace. Because when you have that peace, a joy come over you like no man's business. Things don't bother you. You learn to take everything to God because you trust him. When you trust God, you take everything to God and you don't settle for anything outside of God. When you serve God, God keep you. When you belong to God, God keep you. Harm can't come to you, danger can't come to you. That's his promise to us, all of God's children. He will keep safe. But you have to belong to him. You have to put in the time. You have to build that relationship with God. You have to get to know him. He said, my sheep knows my voice. To get to know God's voice, you have to spend time in his presence so that you can hear his voice and so that you know when he's speaking. God will never tell you to do nothing bad. He will never tell you to do something dishonest. He will never tell you lie. He will never tell you to commit no sin. That's not in him. You get out what you put in. So what is it that you want out of life in this 2023? What is it that you want God to do? Bring your plans to him. What is it that you want? What good thing is it that he's already blessed you with in Christ? What is it that you desire this year? Give God thanks for it. He's already given it to you. So let us commit let us prioritize. Let us give our hearts to God and give it to Him and do not take it away from Him. Do not. Because life becomes hard, difficult, a struggle, painful when you don't have Christ. 
it really becomes painful. Let this be the year that brings you the most joy, the most peace, the most love, the most laughter you've ever had in your life. Commit to that. Say, God, this is going to be my best year. This is going to be my year where things turn around. This is going to be the year where I laugh and I dance before you because of the goodness that you manifested in my life. This is the year that I'm going to see greater and better in my life. This is the year that I desire my family. This is the year that I would like to see my family grow and increase. This is the year that I really love to see my diploma on the wall, my certificate on the wall. This is the year that I want to move towards such and such. This is the year. They're all good things, but do not want those things outside of Christ. Because you can get the diploma, you know, you can get all the certificate, you can get all the money in the world, but if you don't have Christ, do you really have it? What is it that you really want? Some of us spend too much time on the job working, too much time away from home. Some of us have loved ones we haven't seen in a year, two years. Go visit them, people. Pick up the phone and say, hi, how you doing? You don't know how long they're going to be here with you. We need to stop taking people for granted. Let us invest in family. Let us invest in family. Fa funerals. Funerals when people die, look here. The cars park up all on the side of the road where people go into the church and go into the, and go into the grave site. Because they knew that person. But you don't see that on a regular day where people just go and heal them. Don't wait till they die to give your respect. Stay in there to receive that respect. Mm -hmm. Honor them while they still have breath in their body. Honor them. Pour love on them. Don't have to go sit up in their house all day every day. Pick up the phone. Everybody got a phone. Call someone you haven't spoken to in a long time. Just saying hi, hope all is well, have a great blessed day. It's simple. Don't isolate yourself from family. Don't do that. Be a better you. Be a better person. Don't wait till they die to go show your respects. Throw them some flowers. Flowers are inexpensive. We have someone who makes flowers. Get a deal on it. <laughs> say, Alvon, you say I must call you exactly to get some flowers. She can give you my discount. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Love people, man. Love people. You only have them for a short time in your life. Love people. Honor them. The word of God says to honor your parents that your days may be long on the earth. Honor them. Honor them. Honor them. Don't look at the same flowers, that's wasting money. They only gonna die. Let them die, but let them enjoy the flowers. That's a lot of people say, you know. But only broke people, only people who got curses on them and say them things. Selfish people, stingy people. What I get flowers, what I get there, I can buy my plant, and the plant never reach. Because it's not in their heart to, to do good. Put it in your heart to do good. Carry the flowers. Carry the chocolate. Yeah, whatever they like. My mom like cheesecake. I buy her cheesecake. And she, let me tell you something. I usually buy from one bakery in Nassau. Yeah, they might be a little pricey, but it really tastes good. And the only toppings they just have are toppings with my mommy really don't like, which is the cherry and the, what do you have there, mommy? It's pineapple. But she really, really enjoys, she loves blueberry. So what I used to do, I buy the plain cheesecake and I buy the blueberry topping and I put the blueberry on the cheesecake. Because I know she enjoys cheesecake. And so whenever I do it, I make sure I give her cheesecake. On her birthday, which just passed, flowers, one of my brothers and I, flowers and cheesecake. Give them flowers while they're alive. She turned 80. Turn 80. Some of your new parents still love your parents. Treasure them. Value them so they can bless y'all. 
so they can speak a blessing on you. Your grandparents, some don't even know the last day they see their grandparents. I never had grandmothers. Never. I don't know what it is to say Grammy. Do not know what it is to say Grammy. You all who know what it is to say Grammy, pick up the phone and say hello Grammy. Go by Grammy. If you ain't want to go by Grammy, pick up the phone. Call your Grammy. Call your grandmother. Say hello. Two chances are she might even remember your voice. Still do it. That's family. That's family. God bless you with them. God value people, value people. He say love your neighbor as yourself. So if you love yourself enough to go and treat, give yourself a treat, give somebody a treat too. Give them a treat who you know he had a treat in a long time. Amen? Amen? Let us put in what we want to get out. Let us put in value. Let us put in time. Let us make the right friendship. I have friends in my life that have been there for many years, many years, many years, 20 years, 30 years plus. We're still friends. Even though we're on different islands, but I had a friend in my life for more than 30 plus years. Um, we're still friends today. Still talk on the phone. More than 20, 20, more than 20 years on different islands. But every now and again, we pick up the phone and we chat, we talk. Find time, make time. People are valuable. Don't take them for granted because you're busy with work and busy with life. You get out what you put in. When they sit down, oh, you see a lot of old people sitting down lonely, they spend all their lives working, working, and not valuing people. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Amen? Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for your word this morning. Lord, we repent, Father God, if we have not showed the value that we should show. For you say we must love our neighbors ourselves. Teach us, O oh God, how to value people in our lives that you've blessed us with. So much, Father God, blessings that we overlook and don't say thank you for. Lord, we thank you for our family members, all of them. We thank you for our friends, Father God, all of them. Teach us, O oh God, how to invest time in the word, time in you. Time with us, growing us to be better people. That husband, that wife, that daughter, that son. Let us be, Father God, all that you created us to be. Show us how to be a better person. Grow us, Father God, in you, in your word. That we take on, Father God, the characteristic of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave his life. And he served you. Give us more joy, more peace, more love, more laughter in our hearts. But most of all, God, let us hold on to it. Let us want it, first of all. Let our homes, Father God, be blessed. Let it be our home, Father God, where the Holy Spirit is, where there's love, where there's laughter, where there's peace, where there's joy, where there's true happiness, oh God. Let our lives, Father God, be transformed by this word today, Father God, that we focus our attention on you giving you first place so teach us how to prioritize our life making you front first center lord jesus so that god we walk in full obedience to your word we hear when you speak to us and we do all that you tell us to do and father god we thank you we ask you to bless this week that is coming up go before us father god Deliver us always from all evil. Give your angels, as you say, charge over us every day of our life. lives. Smash down gates of brass and cut through bars of iron for us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Make the crooked path straight and the wrong right. Every person in our life, God, that is bringing us stress, drama, Father God, and Lord, you place them there. Give us the prayer to pray to help them be saved, delivered, set free. Father God, and anyone in our lives that you have not given to us, who's not supposed to be in our lives and be invited in our lives, and Father God, making us unhappy, stressing us out, Father, forgive us for bringing them in our lives. Forgive us, oh God. If we've made any soul ties with them, God, we repent, forgive us. 
sever every tie to that, that person or persons. And Father God, let them live our lives now in the name of Jesus. Bring the right people in our lives, Father God. Teach us how to sow good seeds in good soil that we get good fruit in return. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.